This is Bruce from www.fighterkitecentral.com. Today we're going to talk about bow tension and how to measure it, or at least one way to measure it. And what difference does it make, anyway, what the bow tension is? Well, it really doesn't. Except, <laughs> if you're interested in building a kite so that it will fly in a specific range of wind, and that you can predict that. Uh, it's helpful to know what the tensions are. So here's uh, what we're going to do. I've got a scale here. This is nothing elaborate. It's a uh, kitchen scale I borrowed from my wife. Put a piece of putty on the top and zeroed out the weight to, uh, or the scale to zero. Put the putty on there so it will hold the uh, material that I'm going to test the tension of and not uh, fly off the top of the scale. I have a piece of carbon fiber that's 0 0.05 inches in diameter, 19 and a half inches long. I've marked the center. Now what I'm going to do is two things here to start off with. I'm going to put the top uh, one end of the uh, carbon fiber on the top of the scale. And I'm going to press on the other end until it deflects about how I think it would fit into a kite. Now you can see on the scale there's very little deflection actually. This is a relatively soft material, very soft bow. Also it's interesting to note that once the tension is created, more deflection of the bow doesn't create much more or any more tension registered on the scale. Now I'm going to make it a little bit more obvious. I'm going to I mark the center of this and, and I'm going to hold just the center of the bow and I'm going to press on the center to deflect just half of the bow. And you'll notice there's a tremendous difference in the uh, amount of tension or pressure created. And I'm going to continue to press it so it's way more severe a bend than would be in a kite. And then lessen the bend and you'll notice very little change in the tension until almost straight. That's a quality of carbon fiber and most synthetic materials. This is a bow that's 24 inches long. I've also marked the center of it. It's 0 0.06 inches in diameter. I'm going to hold it at the center and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press it down until it deflects. Now, if I were really scientific on these, what I would do is use these measurements. I'd write down the measurement on one side. I would then turn the bow over, hold it in the center, and measure the tension on the other side. Now here it appears that this tension is slightly more on this side than on the other. Well, with carbon fiber or fiberglass, you can sand lightly a little bit off of this portion to increase the flex or reduce the tension. And you can uh, measure it on the scale, sand it a little, remeasure until it's exactly the same on each side. Now with bamboo, it's exactly the same process. This is a bamboo bow that I used, uh, well I made it the other day on the video, or partially completed it. But here the tension, this is quite a stiff bow. Here you can see the tension on one side and the shape of the deflection. And uh, I'm going to measure it on the other side just to see. This is a very good way for bamboo bows to be measured on tension, one right side to the left side. It's quick, it's easy, and you can see that the tension is quite different on this side than it is on the other side. This side's quite a bit stiffer. 
So with this bow, if it were going to be used in a kite, I would shave it right in here to lessen the tension or lessen the stiffness of it and continue to work with it until it's equal in tension on the right side versus the left side. This is another bamboo bow, much lighter, uh, much thinner for a lighter weight kite. I'm going to bend it the same way and you'll see that the tension here is much, much less than the previous bamboo bow. And the amount of flex that I'm creating is much greater than, in a, than it would have in a kite or a kite that I would make. I'll turn it over and try the other side. Yeah, it's a little different. So there again, you would shave the stiffer side just a little and uh, remeasure it. Shave it again, remeasure both sides until they're equal. Then you'd have a, a bow that would have provide equal tension uh, to the kite in, uh, in flight. Now one of the other things that contributes to a kite's tension or its ability to fly in specific wind speeds is whether or not the skin material itself is stiff or if it has inherent resistance. If the material that you use for the skin of the kite is very soft and or very flexible and will flex and uh, distort its shape with virtually no pressure applied to it, just a little bit. Uh, that is, in my opinion, the best material for the skin of a kite because it is more sensitive to every little change in the wind. And the wind pressure, when you're flying a kite, I mean, the wind isn't constant. The wind changes all the time. And it changes in various ways so the more sensitive the kite is, at least in my opinion, to those variances in wind, the better chance you have of controlling that kite. Now if you have a material for the skin that is quite stiff inherently, doesn't flex much, then what it does is it adds to whatever the tension is in the bow that you have installed in the kite. So if you are thinking that you're going to install a bow that will make the kite fly in winds of say three to five seven miles an hour but you use a material for the skin that's quite stiff the stiffness of that skin material will add to the stiffness of the kite in almost the same way as adding or, or putting in a bow that is quite a bit stiffer than the one you actually installed. So the kite you made to fly in those lighter winds may not fly in those winds at all. Not because the bow was wrong or because you misjudged the tension on the bow, but because the combination, the additive effect of the tension in the bow and the uh, resistance of the skin material to flexing uh, created a stiffer kite than you had anticipated. Now what stiffness do you need for what winds? Well, that, that's a good question and, and, and it depends a lot on each flyer. Every flyer seems to have a comfort zone and that comfort zone is only known by that flyer. So I can only suggest that you if you use this measuring method to build your kites, make a record. Just jot down the tension you had in the bow and fly the kite in a variety of winds and then mark down what winds it flew best in or the winds you felt best flying it in, where it had the most control, was the fastest, or whatever it was you're trying to accomplish. I hope this helps in uh, your kite making and hope to see you next time. Thanks.